I ain't never been with a baddie. Mm. Mm. I remember I've been watching it way too much TikTok recently. Like it's actually pretty bad. I've actually been preferring to watch TikTok over YouTube, which is also kind of why I haven't been here. And I just realized how crazy I look with my concealer on, uh, but it's fine. All right, we're just gonna do a quick little tutorial anyways. Hey guys, what is up, what's going on? Welcome back to another one of my videos. Sorry, it's been a little bit since I have posted, but uh, yeah, holidays. Holidays is all I'm gonna say. It's just, I was just fucking lazy and I didn't really feel like posting. But what's up, welcome back. Today, we are going to be doing a quick little tutorial here on my channel. Obviously, as you guys can see, we are going to be doing some sort of a review today because I only have my concealer on my face. Um, and the reason being is because I actually saw on TikTok two different videos, one of which was a review um, or a quick little tutorial of this Laura Geller foundation from a TikToker who I've never heard of. The other one was actually Susan Yara, who you guys know I am obsessed with Susan Yara because I actually have two of her, uh, two of my favorite products right here from her brand, which is Notorium. Um, I've been obsessed with her channel for quite a while now, and she actually did a short here on YouTube and I believe on TikTok about this product, so I figured what the hell, I would pick it up. So this is what we're gonna be reviewing today. This is the Laura Geller Baked Balance and Brighten Color Correcting Powder Foundation. They don't call it a powder foundation. It's literally just called a color correcting foundation, but it is a powder foundation. Um, now you guys know I do have pretty dry skin, but I do live in Houston, Texas, which is a very warm, musty, uh, humid climate. So more mattifying products typically do work better for my skin, even though I do have very dry to dehydrated skin. And I was literally just gonna give this a try, so that's kind of why I have my concealer sitting on my face. But actually, let me do this. I'm going to quickly blend this out and I'll be right back. Okay, now everything is blended out and I have obviously set my under eyes down with a little bit of powder, the same products that I always use here on my channel. And I will link obviously everything down below for what you don't see in this video. First video that I saw was from just a random TikToker who I really don't know who it is. Second one was from Susan Yar. So what I will do is post a little bit of a TikTok so you can see what I'm talking about right here. It's a powder, but it says it's a color correcting foundation little skeptical i'm not gonna lie as you can see it's a baked powder and i believe we're just supposed to grab a brush and just go to town so here we go i also want to type out i'm just gonna go ahead and type out right here what's on the back of this box these are some pretty mighty claims i'm just gonna do one side of my face this brush is a prototype but it's nice and dense so oh this is not what i expected this legit looks so good i'm sorry i take it all back it was fast it was easy just look at that difference and that ad kind of got me and then after watching that tiktok i actually saw a bunch of ads pop up on my instagram as well as my tiktok regarding this product Lori geller is not really a big well-known brand um, i was obsessed with this product right here which is her baked blush and brighten blush for years again if you've been around here for a while you will know that because this was pretty much the only blush that i had ever used for the past two to three years i originally got this in a, in a boxy charm a couple of years ago and i used it until earlier this year when i did run out and Lori geller was available previously at ulta but once she kind of got out of Ulta and did her own thing. I don't really know where else she is available at right now. I just assume that her brand kind of went under just along with a lot of brands over the past couple of years. So I just kind of moved on to other blushes and I didn't really know that she even offered other products. But when I saw that pop up, I was like, whew, hell yeah, I can get my blush and I could try out this new powder foundation. Plus at the time, this was around Christmas time. So I was able to get a 30, it was either 30 or 40% off. So I figured, hell, you sold me on it, I'm gonna pick it up. So that is exactly what I did. Now I picked up mine in the shade medium. I'm not quite sure if this is gonna match because I did purchase mine online, um, obviously because I can't find hers in available in store. A little bit about this powder foundation. There's really not too much on here. It does say that it's going to balance out your skin tone and brighten your day. It's supposed to make your shade matching an easy, breezy, beautiful, that's CoverGirl, not Lori Geller, but a breeze. Um, it's supposed to have color correcting swirls of multicolored liquid pigments and it's baked for 24 hour wear. It's supposed to be weightless and very easy to apply. And it's supposed to have the benefits of a cream product, which I'm not like a huge fan of cream products, but we shall see here. I really don't know much else about it. The one thing that I do not enjoy, okay, the first ingredient in this product is talc. <laughs> and I don't think the talc is like absolutely horrific for your skin. I'm not somebody who's like anti-talc. I would much prefer to have ingredients in my products that are talc free and obviously are cruelty free. But if they're not, I'm not super anti those products. I just find it very weird when the first ingredient is an ingredient that most people are not enjoying in their products these days. You know, that's yeah. This is what the product looks like. It does have a very marbly, cool, 
effect to it. It is very pleasantly pleasing to the eye. And I'm just gonna kind of pop it on my skin to see what it looks like. I am gonna go in with the same brush I typically use for all my powder foundation. This is a Morphe brush right here. It's a big powder brush. It is kind of dirty, but I have washed off all of the product. I just went in with a little bit of my The Cinema Secrets Makeup Brush Cleaner. Um, this is just, it looks like this because it is fully I mean, I've used this for a very long time, so it's just stained at this point, but it is like semi-dirty, but not really that dirty. And I'm gonna try to use this as first. If this is not good enough, then I will go in with a fluffy brush like this from e.l.f., which is just a normal foundation brush to see if it's a little bit, if it needs a little bit more dense. Um, now, obviously you guys can tell my face is still lighter than my body because I have recently self-tanned. So you can see the line of darkness right there. And my concealer is a little bit darker than the rest of my face. I'm hoping that I can color correct all of this. And we're just going to go through here. Blend, blend, blend. There doesn't really seem to be much product in here. Uh, 18 mils, which is about half of what you would get with a standard foundation. What did I just do with the, oh, there it is. Yeah, it is 0.32 ounces, nine grams. So you normally get one ounce of a liquid foundation, but this is a powder. Now what happened, what about like a normal powder foundation? I didn't use a lot of powder foundations, you guys know this, but um, here compared to the L'Oreal one, which is, oh, same same amount, 0.31, nine grams, comparing it to the Maybelline Super, Super Stay Full Coverage Powder Foundation. This is 0.21. Wow, the Maybelline one actually has less. So hopefully, I guess it's pretty standard. Let's just go in here. Okay, I mean, the color looks really good. It is definitely matching my neck. And we're gonna go half on this side, just so you guys can see the difference. Prior to this, I did go with my standard skincare routine, which you guys, if you've been around here for a bit, you'll know exactly what that is. And I have let it sink in on my face for about 20 minutes, so that way there really isn't too much on my skin. Okay, I mean, that is kind of like one little layer on my face. Obviously, this is a side that has a product. This is a side that does not. It did a great job of overall just going through and evening out my skin tone. It really doesn't give too much of actual coverage because you can still see a lot of my imperfections right here popping through. But what I'm gonna do is take more of a dense brush here and go in, just patting it because I don't want to ruin the product, and blend it. Okay, here we go. This side is actually looking a little bit darker than the other side. Okay, and now I'm kind of going just back over to the other side and going over areas that the other light brush was not able to uh, hit. Wow, okay, so that is, I don't really, can you really say it's like one layer of a product? So I feel like I went over the entire product or my entire face numerous times with the product, but it is a powder, so it's a little bit more difficult for me to really call it a layer of product, but everything does look really good. I mean, the only parts I did conceal were my under eyes. I went a little bit around the redness of my nose, up the bridge of my nose right here and right in my T-zone. Those are the areas where I really wanted extra coverage. I feel like, this powder foundation does look really good on my skin. Up close, and you guys are in just natural lighting right now. I just have a big window sitting right in front of me. I don't have any box lights on. I don't have any ring lights on. It's just natural lighting here. Everything up close looks really good. My pores are not fully being emphasized, but that being said, I didn't also use like any type of primer, uh, which again, I normally don't. So if I can go in the lighting right here, you guys can tell my pores are kind of standing out slightly, but I do have larger pores, that's just my skin. Um, and then you can see a little bit of my pigment over here is not being covered up. I don't really know if it claims to be like medium coverage. Um, I'm not really quite sure. I mean, with a powder foundation, typically there's not much coverage that comes with it. It's really just meant to even out your skin tone, which I feel like this definitely has. I mean, it's now matching my body fairly well, um, and it has covered up the pigment issues for the most part that I'm wanting it to, and it looks really beautiful on the skin. The one thing that I do not like currently, like I said, around the pore area, this is being emphasized because this does have a luminous finish to it, semi-luminous finish. I don't wanna call it dewy, and I don't wanna call it like a highlighter, but it does give a semi-glow and sheen to the skin if you can tell like right there, which going over my pore area isn't the best because I typically don't like to highlight that area. Even if I use products like my tried and true, my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Finishing Powder, I normally steer clear of these areas because I don't want to emphasize them over time, but it does look beautiful everywhere else on the skin. Um, I really do feel like I should have just concealed, concealed with concealer a little bit more in these areas. But yeah, so far I do really like it. I think it did a great job for an everyday type finish. I I'm kind of curious to see how the rest of my products do layer on top of it. I kind of 
want to do a preset and then a finishing set, actually pause, that's what we're gonna do. I am going to set one side of my face with my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist on this side of my face. Um, before I go with my products, the side's just gonna go in with afterwards. After I finish everything up, I'm, I am going to go in with my lovely um, Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless, flawless setting spray all over my face and set everything down, but I do wanna do a preset here before I go with my products though. And then just set this side of my face. I'm gonna let this fully set down. And then I'm gonna do what I normally do with my products, which is take a very damp beauty sponge, which I use to blend out my concealer and just go over it to really set everything in. What pre-setting your makeup does, it's supposed to make everything kind of blend right into your skin to make it look more skin-like and less powdery, which this is so light anyway, I'm not quite sure if it's going to do much, but yeah, we'll see. Okay, I mean, I feel like it took a lot not a lot of the coverage away, but it did take a little bit of my coverage away on that side. This is a little bit more emphasized than it was before, and it is looking a little bit more dewy, but we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna jump off camera. I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup, and I will be right back to check in for the first time with you guys. Whew, all right. Okay, guys, we are back. Obviously, I finished the rest of my makeup. I wanted to jump back on here to just do a quick little check-in. It's been about an hour, but I was literally just finishing up my makeup, doing my hair, well, refreshing my hair, all of that. So right now it is currently 2.20 in the afternoon and I definitely have thoughts by this point. Um, sorry, the lighting keeps shifting again because it's like getting cloudy and then it was super bright and then cloudy and then super bright. But yeah, that's just kind of how it is right now today in Houston. So, okay, here are some of my initial thoughts. And again, in case you guys have any questions about what makeup I am wearing on my face, I will link everything down below as per usual. Um, I am looking very, very, very dewy, very luminous, very shiny, which... I'm not saying I dislike by any means. I don't mind it. I definitely do have more of the dry skin vibes, but everything is looking super highlightery. Like I took a highlighter powder and I just went all over my face with it, which I didn't do. Normally when I look this dewy, it's because I went in with a lot of my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. I didn't go in with this at all today. Now, granted, I have not set my face down quite yet. Um, you guys know that I did set my face, this side of my face down with my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I have not done anything on the other side. So what I wanna do is put this kind of all over my skin. I hate getting this stuff in my hair because it just makes my hair look super sticky, but I'm just gonna roll, roll do this. I'm just gonna close my eyes. Okay, lightly set everything in place. This is more of a mattifying finish, but it like lets everything last all day long, but I'm hoping it might remove a little bit of the shine. I don't mind the shine again in the outer portion of my face, but it's just hitting areas right now that I don't want it to hit, like my pores, my nose, everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna pounce all of this in. And I know some of you guys might really enjoy a very dewy looking finish, but I don't. I don't want to look like a highlighter. And I don't want to look sweaty. Okay, so all of that is kind of in place. I'm not really a huge fan of this for everyday makeup as of right now. It's been an hour, obviously, not like a big, big, big fan. If you guys can tell, and it's hard to see on Canon cameras because Canon kind of makes everything look great. But when I was doing my makeup, I'm sorry, when I was doing my hair in my bathroom lighting, all of this was super emphasized and you could see every little cake crevice, little wrinkle that I have under my eyes. Plus all of this looks super heavy because it's super highlightery. Because anytime that you're taking something and you're bringing light to it, it's going to emphasize that area. That's why typically you really don't want anything shiny in this area. That's it just, it just highlights the portions of your face that you don't necessarily want to be highlighted. And I'm not really loving that. I'm sure I could take a mattifying powder over top to really set this down. But for the powder itself, I'm not enjoying it for an everyday finish. I think that this would be fine if I was wearing this to the gym, because I normally like to put a little powder foundation on before I go to the gym on like the weekends at least, because I normally have errands to run or do something afterward but I want to you know, ma make my face match my body. But for every day, I'm not enjoying it. So what I wanna do on this side of my face is take my everyday powder, which is my L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour powder foundation. I am going to take a little bit like this and just set right here and see on my right side of my face and see if it does much to reduce the shine. It might not, to be honest. Oh, 
it slightly has in that area, which I, I actually really do like, because I don't know if you guys can tell, this side of my face is still shoot super, super, super shiny. And this one's not fully shiny. It is semi right there. <sighs> okay. I don't know. Um, I don't know. All right. I am going to do this. I am going to go about the rest of my day and I will check in with you guys before I wash my face off, probably around nine o'clock tonight. And that'll be a full eight hour wear test. I don't imagine that it's really going to get like oily by any means because it is a powder. I just have a feeling like everything's going to still be luminous and highlightery at the end of the day, but I still want to do it for you guys. So I'm gonna jump off camera and I will be back at the end of the night to check in to let you guys know my final thoughts. Right now though, in terms of comparing it to the rest of my foundation collection, I would rate this a three out of 10. Uh, I'm not loving it, but I'll see you guys at the end of the night to give you my final rating. I'm gonna click go, I'm gonna turn the light on so you guys can actually see here in a second. Let the light adjust one little minute. All right guys, I'm doing a final check and I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't really feel like putting my lights on in my beauty space, so I figured I would kind of do it here. Um, but it is now currently 10.15 in the evening. <laughs> Do you still call it an evening? No, it's definitely 10, 15 at night. Um, so I've had this product on and my face on for nine hours, a little bit longer than I was anticipating, but hey, means more for you guys. Um, and I wanted to do a quick little check-in here. Um, as I thought, and I'm in my, my bathroom lighting, which is very harsh lighting, so it's gonna be like as legit as you can get. As I thought earlier today, things still look really good. They really haven't changed because the powder foundation is not a liquid foundation, meaning that even if I get like sweaty or whatever the case is, that's kind of the benefit of a powder foundation. It's not going to break apart because it's powder. Putting a powder foundation on my type of skin at first can look really, really, really dry and cakey. Um, and when it tends to get a little bit of breakthrough oils, which can happen, um, it actually ended up I know I'm kind of all over the place. I'm sorry. I'm really tired, um, which can happen to me because even though I have really dry and dehydrated skin, I live in, again, Texas. Today, the first half of the day was pretty humid. The second half was actually, we had a cold front come through, so it was pretty chill um, and not much humidity in the air. But because I was still like living life and oils come through, things just kind of started getting set down a lot more. So I'm not looking quote unquote oily. But I have a feeling that if you do have oily skin, this can look a little bit oily on you. But again, the benefit of having powder foundation is that you already have powder on your skin as a foundation. So it's less likely to look as oily because the powder is kind of con con contradicting that, contracting that, contracting that, contrasting that. I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But here's kind of my final thoughts. I'm gonna get up close here so I can see. Um, <laughs> all right. In my bathroom mirror, which I'm looking in, my pores look super, emphasized. Ooh, I think I have a filter on. Hold on. Okay, there we go. I just have a low filter on because I'm us using my Sony ZV-1, so now you can really tell there's no filter on this right now. My pores are super emphasized right here. My smile lines are slightly coming through, and I am looking really shiny. I've looked this shiny since the very beginning because this is a very luminous product, so the shine isn't really anything different than what it was, but I feel like every little line on my face that could ever come out is popping out. Same thing with my pores. They're looking very, 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 very emphasized right now. And it's pretty much rubbed. Uh, I don't say rubbed off on my nose, but it's not looking like the best on my nose. I don't want to say this is a bad product. I feel like if you are somebody who has very, very, very dry skin and you live in a very dry climate and you like luminous products and you like to look like you are the Tin Man dipped in highlighter, you will love this. If you have aging skin, if you have textured skin, if you have mature skin, pores, I wouldn't recommend using this on your T-zone because I have pores here, here, places that most people have pores and they are looking very emphasized because obviously with the highlighter, it's bringing those to the front of the room um, or front of the face. But, um, I would recommend using a regular powder foundation like the L'Oreal Infallible Foundation or really any powder foundation to set your T-zone and then going in with this on the rest of your face. I think that would be really pretty. Or I will certainly, obviously I already own the product. I'm going to use it like if I go to the gym and I need to film or if I have like, I really don't have much going on, I'll still use it. I will not use this as a daily product. I will not use this to go to work. I will not use this to like go out because it's just not making me look my best. But I would give this product overall a 
for me, like a four out of 10, which really hurts my soul because literally the blush is my favorite blush of all time. Like having that back in my collection has already made my makeup game so much better. Like it's, it's the perfect shade for me. It is the perfect consistency for me. It is a perfect luminosity for me. It's just, it's literally magic. That is my favorite blush of all times. This powder foundation though, I would give it a four out of 10, not my favorite. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry that this is a very rambly video. I'm not really <laughs> back into like filming. Um, it's really awkward walking around with the camera again for the first time in a few weeks. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you would like to see in the future. I do have a lot of vlogs I need to post from like still October, November for like my wedding planning series. I will actually be wedding planning. I'm gonna take you guys along with me this coming weekend when I ask my bridesmaids to be my bridesmaids. I hope that they're not watching this video because if they are, they're gonna find out. Um, and then I also have just like some videos. I think I'm gonna do like a compilation video, just one big video of all of December, like putting my tree up, taking my tree. Well, I don't really take my tree down, but like all that. Um, yeah, but thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Have a fantastic evening. Enjoy your week and I will see you in my next one. Bye.